بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everybody This is my second lecture in how to conduct literature review The first one was mainly about why do we need to conduct literature review There were three main reasons Identify knowledge gap because without it you cannot finish your PhD you cannot take your PhD Second thing is defining concepts used in your research question, research aim, research objectives. The third objective is, of course, in the case of positive research, your hypothesis, how you deduce, develop your hypothesis from literature review. So these are three main reasons. This lecture, it will be about how we can find knowledge gap. Next one about how we can define concept. The third one about theoretical framework. The fourth one about critical writing, the principles of critical writing. So let's talk about knowledge gap. Mainly, I have two schools in knowledge gap. One which is very popular, the another not popular. The one which is very popular is finding knowledge gap. So all my aim is to find a knowledge gap. Look, find. So I have something like a wall and I try to detect a gap in the wall. Okay, detect gap. In order to detect a gap in the wall, I need to find this is a block, 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 block. I describe all of these blocks. I criticize all of these blocks and say there is a hole. Nobody has talked about this hole before. So. This is my research comes to fulfill this whole, this knowledge gap. This is the first and the very common one. The second one, I do not advise you to do that. You can take Nobel Prize, of course, by the second approach, but it's very risky, especially if you do PhD. You can do it in a paper or you can enjoy your time, which is creating knowledge gap. Creating knowledge gap. What does it mean creating knowledge gap? Creating knowledge gap, it means that I will not look at this wall of science, of literature, and I will not search for a gap in this wall. I will search in a different paradigm of science, which is new. So I put the first block in the wall. What does it mean? Maybe if there is a new technology called cuckoo. What's cuckoo? I don't know. New technology called cuckoo. So we invent a new technology. It's inimitable. No one has talked about this before. It's very new. It's crazy. It will change the world. I'm the first one. So I do not have sufficient literature review to find a wall. I am the first one to talk about it. So I put the first block in this idea. Creating knowledge gap is very it's popular to be used in, in grounded theory research. And I talked about this before. Grounded theory research is mainly about grounded. Look, it's called grounded from scratch. I try to find from scratch. I don't have very big body of knowledge to help me. I need to explore. I need to find out. Okay, so this creating knowledge gap, but it's very risky. Even people who, are, who used to use grounded theory, they do not love to think radically like that. American people, in particular, they prefer this kind of research. It's not research. They call it, okay, write a book about it. And this book could be considered as a literature later. So creating knowledge gap is very tricky in, in research. So I don't advise you to think about it a lot of time. Okay, how can I find knowledge gap? How can I find the hole in the wall and get it to say this is knowledge gap? As I told you before, it's not easy at all. Science is too big. No one can manage all of the science in the world. It's impossible. All what I need to do is just to convince people that I can find knowledge gap and I convince people that there is a knowledge gap. So how can I find that? this? There are many schools. Okay, I will explain three big schools. Okay. I call them, I call them, the Kuhlmann, the circle one, 
and systematic one. This is how I call them. I don't want to complicate things. If you want to read, go read. But I want to simplify research concepts. Okay? What's the cool one? Which is very, very popular. Cool one is like this. For example, I want to talk about total quality management in health sector in the UK. Total quality management in the health sector in the UK. What do you want about it? I want, I want to investigate the role of CEO in the success of TQM. So I want to look TQM, health sector, UK, and role of CEO okay, in the success. Look how many concepts. So the general one is TQM. What do you want in the science of TQM? Science of TQM, critical success factors. So our first section, I'll talk about TQM. Everything about TQM, general. Finish your section about, I want to talk about only success factors. Success factor in which industry? In service industry. Why? Because you need to talk about healthcare. So TQM, very general, more specific, critical success factors. Okay, I don't talk about all critical success factors in all industry. I just want to talk about critical success factors in healthcare services. So, I want to talk in the service. Which kind of service to talk about? Healthcare. Okay. Okay, that's brilliant. So, this is healthcare. What's next? I want to talk about not all critical success factors, I want to talk about the rule of CEO. So I talk about the rule of CEO. From which angle? Look how I define my research equation. This is very nice research equation. I need to identify the rule of CEO, not all CEO. I want to talk about the optimistic, okay? Not anything, I don't think trick, take any uh, particular point, just anything, okay, the positive, the positive manager, the positive CEO, so I want to talk about the positive, this is my knowledge gap, how can I convince people that there is a knowledge gap, in TQM there are thousands of papers, but in critical success factor, maybe 500, in service, 300, of course, service of critical success factor, 300, in healthcare, just 200, okay, Rule of CO 100, positive CO about 50, the positive rule of CO in all of that in the healthcare in the UK, 5. Take the 5, come on. Criticize all of that. This paper, okay, the 5 talks is particular in my, my point, in my very precise point. So I take everyone and criticize each of them. So the first one has a problem in methodology. The second one, it's good, but it's irrelevant in blah, blah. The third one have a problem in blah, blah. The fourth one, and they criticize all of them. I must criticize all of them. And finally, nobody will deal with this problem in this perspective as I do. This is my knowledge gap. This is my knowledge gap. So I conducted this research to fulfill this knowledge gap. If you find any paper could be compared to your paper, you have to take it, criticize it. Why? Because in the review, in the exam, maybe someone can say, this is very close to you. Why don't you consider this? If that's happened, you can fail. You maybe fail. Take care. So don't let anyone to attack you by this. Any paper you feel is somehow close to what you do, Take it, criticize it. Because if he bring it to you and say, why don't you consider this one? I consider it. Well, it's in page 120. Open it, please. Yes, it's here. Thank you. That's finished. Even if you, maybe you write rubbish words, but you consider it. As I told you before, nobody can read you what you did carefully. Just he wants to trick you. So be smart how to defend yourself. Any paper could be relevant to what you do, you must consider it 
and decrease size. This is the first school, the Kun one. It's very famous. I advise you, if you follow this way of structuring your literature review in order to cover your knowledge gap, I advise you to draw this in the introduction of literature review. So the examiner, oh, that's very nice. Now I understand. This is the point. Wow, that's good. So he will not read what you did. He doesn't have a time. Why? Because you fulfill the first one. Knowledge gap, originality, trick. Good. This is the first important criteria to succeed in PhD. So if you draw this for him, for the examiner from the beginning, he will thank you a lot because you saved a lot of time for him. So that's fine. The second one is the circle. I call it circle. Some people call it sensizing literature review. Others call it mapping the science. That's, that's make a sense for me. Any, any name, we don't write the names in, in the thesis, just do it. In circle, it's very, very useful if you do your research in different disciplines. For example, in marketing, in HR, and in accounting. So you tell people that you are doing research here, and no one cover this part. Of course, it's impossible to say no one. So again, don't say no one, because if you say no one, ah, it's very embarrassing to say that, by the way. Don't say no one. Say it's, there is a lack of research. However, pick three or four very close to you here in this circle, criticize them, say I am different from, I'm different of them, by blah, blah, blah. I, I, this is my contribution to knowledge, I am new here. So this is, of course, it could be TQM, crit and of course, TQM critical success factors may be here, health, skill, and education. It's based on what do you think about it, okay? It, you should have different disciplines. So in operation management, you took a certain point. In, in information systems, you take another angle. So from different disciplines. This is very nice, especially if you do something in marketing and HR, accounting and operations, so you will find a knowledge gap in this way. This could be very useful in positive research and interpreted, but more useful in positive, because usually positive research in something that lots of research conducted in it, so it's better to visualize it in this way. This is very nice in innovative research or um, applied science research or interpretive research or new ideas research because you usually mix different disciplines so it's, you can find innovation here or novelty here. The third one I do not advise, however I am in Cranford University and the Cranford University is the mother of this uh, methodology. It's called systematic. Systematic simply you consider all papers have a title or abstract, okay, from what you do. And make filtration, then filtration, then filtration, then make tables. It takes at least, it takes at least six months. I made a vote one time for explaining it because it takes a lot of time, but I, I from my perspective, I don't see it gives much uh, value to your research, only it shows clearly the knowledge gap in a systematic way but it was this at least six months. I can use these six months to publish a paper, to be honest. This and this could be take four, three, four months, and I have two or three months so I can publish a paper. I can be more innovative than that because there's more analysis, more criticize, but in systematic, roughly, there is no any criticize. You just make tables, number of, uh, of articles handle this point, number of articles, uh, handle this point, number of articles handle this point, nobody handles this point from different perspectives. It's like a mathematic way to, to show the knowledge gap. So this is, this is the third one, systematic. So I have mainly three approaches to illustrate my knowledge gap. I love graphs so much in illustrating a knowledge gap because it saves a lot of, a lot of time and effort for your examiner. Please, please your supervisor, please your examiner to please you. Simply, please, please your examiner to please you. Make it easy to read. If it's make, you know, lots of things and just knowledge gap analysis is just one paragraph, you would fail for, to be honest. 
knowledge gap should be served at least by four, five, six pages. Okay, so you need to 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 consider this because if you fail in this, you will fail in your PhD. Another important point: usually, PhD handles three knowledge gap, master handles one knowledge gap, master of research handles two knowledge gap. Knowledge gap, it means each knowledge gap could be converted into research objective and it could be converted to be a paper. So if you have three knowledge gap, so in the long run, we believe that you can have three papers. If you have two knowledge gap, we believe that you can have two papers. If only knowledge gap, don't take interview, don't take exam because you will fail. So don't. Because one knowledge gap is very, very, very risky. You have to tell people where is the contribution to knowledge. One, two, three, from this perspective, from this angle, from this angle, from this perspective. Okay, I hope that you understand that very well. If you do not understand that, please send me a question. I may devote more time and effort to explain how, how to find out your knowledge gap. Okay? Thank you very much. This is my second lecture in literature review. The third one will be about defining concepts. How can I define concepts from literature review? Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka.